It is Saturday, the 27th of November, and this is Love Notes, Daily Devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome. Our text today is the 25th Psalm, the first several verses. It's a psalm that cries out to God to hear, to assure, to comfort, to forgive. It really is a psalm that, as I read it, gives me a shape for my own spiritual life and relationship with God. It's one of those psalms that if you got to know it and memorize it, it wouldn't be a bad thing. It starts out by saying, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Because, frankly, there isn't anybody else we can trust, right? The psalmist then goes on and says, Do not let me put, be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. I don't know exactly who the enemies are that the psalmist is referring to. If it's a psalm of David, it could be military or political enemies. It could be enemies in his own family as we read his story. For me, I don't have too many enemies like that, but I do have enemies within Enemies who can win the day and turn me away from God. The psalmist then calls out for God to give wisdom. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, because your ways are better than anybody else's, the implication is. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. How many of us can say that our faith is such that we wait for God all day long, that, that we desire God's wisdom and teaching so much that we cry out for it and open ourselves to God? But even as I say that, knowing that I'm not one of those people who might do that like the psalmist does, I know I need to. Because if I turn to other things for wisdom and the way of living, I'm going to be disappointed every time. You see, God's ways are the only ways. God's ways of grace, mercy, justice, peace, forgiveness, reconciliation, all of the things that Christ showed us. Well, that is the only way that eventually is the way of the kingdom. So maybe we should cry out, teach me your ways, O Lord. Tell me how I should be. How do I live into the image you've created within me? and stop covering it up with all of the other things in my life. Then the psalmist turns inward and says, Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. I know I've been bad at this, Lord. According to your steadfast love, remember me, Lord. Not according to the things that I've done wrong, but because you have made me and you love me. For your goodness' sake, O Lord, remember me. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. I love that line. For your goodness' sake, Lord, listen to me. According to your steadfast love, remember me. Clinging to God's love is a way for us to open our hearts to love God in return. It's also a way for us to learn how to love our neighbor. If God can be allowed into our dark hearts, places where sin and trespasses have all kinds of reminders and memories, if God can be allowed in to clean out our heart, as Psalm 51 says, create in me a clean heart, then we too will learn the ways of God and be able to be the image of God in this world. This psalm instructs us in the way of being with God, of entering into a life with God. And that, my friends, is ultimately all that matters. Let us pray. Gracious God, clear away the distractions of my life that keep me from crying to you. Help me to let go 
of all the things that get between me and you, the sins I've committed, the trespasses that I have done against you and neighbor. Help me, Lord, to clear away all of the debris that gets in the way of calling out to you constantly so that you can shape me and mold me in the image in which you created me. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.